very serious in the newspapers uh, today. Lots of focus on the 30th anniversary of the uh, Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Absolutely. A huge story across the world. I just pulled out a selection of uh, articles. Let's start with uh, Deutsche Welt, the uh, German uh, publication, which talks about the uh, how there's global donors who are pledging more money to keep the site safe because it's still very hazardous. There's still a lot of traces of uh, radio uh, radiation uh, in in the area in general. The Voice of America, the website, uh, is also focusing on the effects of what it calls the worst nuclear accident in history. And these effects are still felt today. 30 years later, Chernobyl is still risky. Uh, and scientists warn a new disaster could be hiding in the surrounding forest. Essentially, uh, if, if there have been forest fires recently, and this could send uh, toxic clouds into the sky, which could really uh, go uh, quite across, quite, a, quite across, I'll get there, quite across <laughs> Europe. Uh, so quite worrying in, indeed. Now, meanwhile, The Telegraph, you found a piece uh, there. This is talking about a team of scientists investigating the uh, effect of the disaster on wildlife. That's right. And the results are quite surprising. Uh, let's take a look at this article. It says that 30 years after the disaster, wildlife is flourishing in the radioactive wasteland. Now, it's known as the zone, uh, and it's become kind of an improbable sanctuary, a wildlife reserve, if you will, for many wild, uh, wild animals like wolves, uh, boars, uh, elk, deer, mm. uh, lots of animals, in fact. So it begs the question, uh, was this uh, accident less damaging to the uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, than to mankind? It's not that simple. Uh, according to scientists, they're, they're still studying this. They say that there were certainly effects on animals, negative effects. But it's interesting, in the absence of humans, the stress of radioactive contamination is more manageable for wildlife. OK. Well, meanwhile, uh, we've also found uh, that 30 years later, radioactive traces are still present right across the country there. Oh, that's right, and right across uh, many other European countries as well. This is a big story here in France. Uh, check out this article in Le Parisien. Chernobyl is still not over, and you can see this map here, this preoccupying map, showing traces of radiation across uh, France. Uh, now, France is, is very uh, interested in what happens after Chernobyl because nuclear energy is a huge deal here in France. 75% of French energy is produced by nuclear power plants. So you can see Le Figaro wondering what is the future of nuclear energy. And inside, it takes a closer look at the situation across the world, and particularly here in France, of course. Le Figaro says that the French government is being a little bit hot and cold about the issue because they've vowed to gradually transition away from nuclear energy and more towards renewable energy. But they're still very ambiguous about the future of France's nuclear power plants. France has 58 nuclear reactors, uh, and uh, they're, they're starting to get quite old, according to Le Figaro. And this is a, a source of concern for the government. Let's move on to a different story. Um, papers in Bangladesh, they're reacting to the death uh, of the editor of the country's first LGBT magazine. That's right. This is a really horrible story coming out of Bangladesh. Let's take a look at some articles. First of all, the new age comes back on the details. Uh, uh, this is uh, Yul Has Manan. You can see a photo of him there. Uh, he and one of his friends were hacked to death in the capital, Dhaka. Now, these attackers came to their apartment posing as couriers, according to this article, and then attacked them. Uh, he was the editor of, as you said, the first first LGBT, so lesbian, gay, bi bisexual, and transgender magazine known as Rupban. Uh, now, another article, the Daily Star, says that no, though nobody has really claimed responsibility for this attack, it really bears all the hallmarks of militant attacks, which are becoming more and more common in Bangladesh. Uh, just on Saturday, a university professor was hacked to death, uh, supposedly for calling for atheism. Uh, earlier this month, a liberal blogger who criticized Islam Islamism was also hacked to death. And of course, last year, we covered these stories quite a lot in the press review. Uh, at least four atheist bloggers were murdered uh, last year for writing critically against uh, Islamism as well. So it's becoming quite a, a worrying trend that's getting a lot of attention across the world. Going to end with a story uh, in Britain. Home Secretary Theresa May has come under fire for saying that Britain should leave the European Court of Human Rights. That's right. She's facing a huge backlash, according to the uh, independent human rights groups have been very critical of what she sa said. What did she say? Now, she cautiously announced her support for the stay campaign, but said that Britain should leave the European Court of Human Rights because it hampers efforts to extradite extremists. Now, uh, there have been a lot of responses to uh, her comments, one in, one in particular that 
that I've seen a lot on social media. This is Patrick Stewart. You might remember mm -hmm. him from Star Trek. Well, he is part of a hilarious sketch, a video uh, that's a satirical take on the Monty Python sketch. What have the Romans ever done for us? Well, this <laughs> sketch exists in article form in The Independent. What has the European Court of Human Rights <laughs> ever done for us? Well, it turns out quite a long list of things, mm. and you can read more about it, but just to give you some examples, freedom of fret freedom of press, child protection, protection from torture and homophobia, so quite a long list indeed. That's all we need, isn't it? Thank you very much. Play with the uh, papers here on France 24.